Welcome to the Board Ghost Dread Rules Primer. So Dread is a GM'd game. It's one of the few GM games that we've played, which means that you'll have a person who is setting up the initial story and doing some setup before you get into play. Normally, when we're playing our GM-less games, everyone puts together the scenario as a group and individually brings something to the table. In a GM'd game, we have in this in Dread, it's called a host, but someone who will want to do a little prep to set up the story and to send the players, the other people who are going to be joining you, a questionnaire that is sort of specific to their character and draws things out of their character. Dread is a game built to be played in sort of one-off situations. Plays in about three to four hours with setup. And the main mechanic is actually a tumbling tower or a Jenga tower. The tension of that tower falling also adds tension to the, the spooky game that you're playing. The game is designed by Epidiah Ravikal, who was developed by The Impossible Dream. Their website is tiltingatwindmills.net. So there's a whole, a whole crew at The Impossible Dream, including Epidiah Ravikal, and their website is tiltingatwindmills.net. You can also purchase the game at Indie Press Revolution, Drive, Drive Through RPG should have the game, and we'll put links on the website so you can get access to it. So this game is played with two to six people. It's recommended to have five or six. Dread is a GM'd game, meaning that you'll have a host player, someone who's setting up the story and telling the tale, and you'll have the other players being player characters. The mechanics for the game are a Jenga tower. And when you're doing the setup, the host is going to pre-prepare a story. You're going to gather around the table. You're going to set up your Jenga tower. You'll have at least one other player along with the host and up to five other players along with the host. Then you will fill out your questionnaire that the host provides you. And there are a number of questions provided in the book that give some history of simple stuff like what is your character's name? And then more leading stuff like why do you not believe in ghosts or what made you believe in ghosts regardless of what other people say? So those get to the heart of your character and are a little bit leading and can give the host something to play with to, to make your character upset to, or to just add tension to your character's life and to the, the life of the game. Depending on the number of players you have, you actually start removing some tiles. This is a little bit of a pace mechanic so that if, say, you have a full contingent of five players and a host, you're not going to pre-pull any tiles. But if you had one player and a host, you're going to pull three tiles for every player missing from that top five. So you're going to pull 12 tiles total if you're playing a one-on-one -on -one game. Uh, if we're playing, like in Board Ghost, a four-player game with one host and three players, you're going to pull two sets of three tiles. You're going to pull six tiles out and stack them on top. And that's what we did. Then later on, whenever someone is left, like whenever the tower collapses and some char someone's character is forced out of the game, out of the story, when you restack the tower, you then are going to remove that number of tiles and stack them on top, do that number of pulls like you did in the beginning, of setup plus three more for every other player that's now out of the game so that that kind of makes things ratchet up because the tower starts off more and more messed up as people fall away from the story so there are going to be times again when the tower is so shaky that you just you just want to sacrifice yourself to succeed that way you may help everyone else or help the situation even though you may die the host if you have a very complex or difficult task may require multiple pulls. So each step in that task, you know, figuring out how to jimmy the lock on the car to get in, then how to pop open the thing without a tool, the proper tool to, to get to hot wiring it, then actually hot wiring it, then driving it in crazy conditions, you know, away from the monster. Those could be four pulls in a row that they need to do. And that's really up to the host decision. Characters aren't always going to get along and character conflict is going to be pretty standard in a stressful game where, you know, you might throw each other under the bus. For the most part, it can be resolved without the tower. Debates, heated arguments, and like posturing. But if the host ever 
it like thinks that the characters are going to resolve it in a way that that someone could be potentially killed or run off or you know removed from the game then they're going to have to pull and it's something that should be left for pretty limited moments it shouldn't happen very often so ways that character can leave the game they could die flee in terror fall into a catatonic state become imprisoned be called away be possessed become transformed become part of the monster themselves get knocked unconscious trapped in a cave hospitalized etc etc so there's any number of ways that they could be removed from the game and from continuing to face the dread along with everyone else that that puts them out of commission. When you have consequences, then you have injury or loss. You're, you should make note of this on your character sheet. You can, you can also electively pull as a player to, to option without being asked by the host, you could do a pull to represent your character, trying to put in more effort than normal on a task. So just in, and they should you should as a player indicate how much effort and why you're putting that effort in. So for example, let's say you're working your way through a cave in a blackout situation, and you're stumbling forward as quick as you can to try to find or get to the air, get to the screaming voice that you hear down the way. You could do a pull and tell your host, oh. I'm also being very careful about my footing because it's slick in here and I want to make sure I don't fall into a hole or trip in any way. And that could force, you could force yourself to elect to pull in order to succeed potentially, hopefully, in that effort. And you can also pull to make an attack more lethal, to look for a clue that you as a player may not have, but your character might be able to notice. And then throughout the course of the game, you just want to take note of the things that happen to your character. You'll do that on your character sheet, you know, just so that you aren't totally keeping it all in your head. There's a lot going on, and the host will record some of it, but you should you should do some too as a character. So there's a big part big part for the host in terms of creating a questionnaire. The book is really well laid out with lots of example text and a lot of like detailed ruling, but then these little like bulleted lists that if you just kind of stick to those, give you the gist of the other stuff so you can... You don't have to read all the way through everything to get the gist of it. So kind of their bullets on the good questionnaire is information about what the character is capable of, what they're not capable of, a hook that invests them in the, that invests the player in that character and a way to tie the character into the plot of the story and a way to tie characters to other player characters and potentially a reason for that character to have hope. So basically something that you can dash, really, like something you can play with. Like, this is their hope. This is what drives them forward. They aren't just going to give up. Or this is what you can use as, as a, to hook them and pull them along. You want to get their behavior, their looks, how they relate, their fears, habits, hobbies, strengths, etc. out of the questionnaire. You want to try to be leading. Kind of think about your game. Think about the situation that you guys have decided to play in and fill it up as much as you can. You can play Dread in a campaign setting so that you can have a multiple night session if your char- if your characters could survive more than one night or if you want to get new characters into the same or new characters into the same story. So there are ways to kind of do this and you can as a GM uh, deal with consequences and record consequences so that you can kind of have a growth and, and a setup to your characters. For the host there's like some guidelines. You you don't sit near the tower. You want to be sure that you are in no way going to knock over the tower. That's for the players to do. You don't want to cheat the other players. So you're going to be playing the monster, but you're not their enemy. You're there to help build the story around them. And the tower is going to make them fail. That's that's the goal. Like They're going to try to do stuff. You're going to try to throw stuff in their way. You can deceive them. You can mislead them. But it's not malicious. It's more about challenging them and finding what's narratively interesting. Don't monopolize the story this is these are all great like gm basics let the other players bring their characters to the story and let those characters fill the story there will be hooks and things and ways that the story will adjust to them but you if you listen to the players then they will be engaged and so will you because you'll have many people telling you something and you being forced to interact with that versus you just sort of telling your tale to a bunch of people if you're playing with multiple people, don't let a single person run the story. Share the spotlight. Every character is important. If you find that someone is making a lot of the pulls, 
maybe that's fine because they're going to be gone soon, but that might also mean that they're really running away with the tail and kind of they've got the reins. Let the balance, like find a way to divert. In this game, splitting up the party is can be actually pretty fun because it just makes everything harder for everybody. They can't share the, the danger. And also don't go easy on anybody. Don't let them off the hook, especially when the tower is a mess. Like just keep the threat up there because that keeps the tension going. Be un- be reasonable. Listen again. It's going to be important. And the players are, are bringing the answers. You're br- you bring the questions and you bring sort of the, the structure and some of the NPC work. They're, they're the ones who are bringing the, the answers and what their characters will do that are going to play in your playground. Don't let humor run the game. This is a game about tension. Humor can be a good defense mechanism and it can help. But if the game becomes silly, then it's just not tense. They might chuckle at the terrible things that are happening to each other and their characters, but you don't want it to become wacky. But you don't want to suppress the humor too. Again, it's they're going to break the tension a little bit and they may need a breather, but you just there's going to be one more bad thing around the corner and let it come back to grounded. But don't don't totally suppress humor. Just don't let the game become silly. You know, just do it. Don't stress it. Play the game. Have other people host the game for you. Just keep playing. A big thing that's with GMing is pacing. The tower pulls are going to be interesting for that. And in terms of like the number of pulls that characters make, I'm not going to go too much deeper into into the dread setup. I mean, it's it's a GM game. So, you know, again, you have scenarios that built by the host, the GM, and then you have a resolution mechanic in the pulls and a sort of overall consequence mechanic with the fall of the tower that's going to drive the choices for your characters within your story. And you're going to have your character players and you're going to have to interact and react to that. The book has tons of resources. It's actually a fantastically written book about different types of horror stories, how to maintain tension, how to play with pacing, all these great moments. And it, I, I can't, even if you're, even if you're just running a D&D campaign or playing in a GMless horror game, reading through Dread and how they talk about madness and gore and supernatural and all these elements that can can be encompassed in a horror game those things are going to add to your understanding of like how to structure those things in a story there are some premises in the game there's also some options if you don't want to use a tower or don't have a access to a tower for other like tension building mechanics that that still can hold up and keep the game moving forward in a similar way so Dread, again, fantastic game. We'll probably get it to the table a couple more times on Board Ghost. Uh, we love our horror games, and it definitely scratches that itch. It's, it's a tight game. It's smart. It's well-written. And the tension of the tower really does add to the tension of the story. Uh, can't recommend it enough. You can, again, pick it up at tiltingatwindmill.net. You can read about it there. It's published by the Impossible Dream crew designed by Epidai Ravikal. You can pick up a Jenga tower on Amazon or at your local big box store. They're not too terribly expensive and be rolling dread via PDF or hard copy of the book. And again, if you want to learn more about where you can get links to the the book itself and the people who publish it, go check out our website, boardghost.com. And you can go listen to our Dread episodes as well. There, There's a good way if you go to the primer section of the episodes down at the bottom of the website, there'll be a list of all the different primers. And within those primers, there's also going to be tags. And if you select the tag, you'll see all the episode, all the, all the stories that we have, all the episodes that are attached to that tag. So if you want to find all the fiasco stories, of which there are many, you can just go down and or off of any of the fiasco stories, really just click on that fiasco tag and boom, you're looking at all the possible fiasco stories that you could listen to. So again, Dread, check it out. Uh, Great game. And I want to thank Alexi Sargent again, who helped us play it the first time on Board Ghost. Dying don't agree with me.